So what we're going to talk about now is how to use the color, uh, color picker. Uh, it's one of the best in the, in the industry in terms of uh, what comes with an application. Um, there are a few plugins you can purchase for other applications, but they're all based off the uh, original uh, color picker from Corel. So let's just go ahead and talk about it. So if you go ahead and go into Corel, when you first open it up, if you look to the right top corner, you're going to see uh, a drawer that's labeled color and layers. Inside of there, you're going to see color uh, and you're going to see a mixer pad and then you're going to see a color set libraries. Uh, this first one we're talking about is color. So let's go ahead and explain that. So when you look at this palette, okay, when you come up to the top, we have what you would see as a hue ring on the outside. And inside there, we have a triangle that allows us to control the saturation levels, okay? So if I pull the crosshair to the far outside right corner, in that corner, that's as, as saturated as the color can possibly be for that particular hue, okay? If you look from that crosshair, if you slide from that crosshair up, what you're getting is a tint. A tint, if you don't know, is basically applying white to a base color of paint. When you go from that crosshair down, you're adding value, so it becomes a shade. So this is color theory terminology that I'm talking about, and I'm talking about it as it relates to real paint. Um, now, if you look at that middle uh, point to the far right, that is what you're gonna have for your um, full saturation, right? Full intensity of the color. Now, if you want to get value where it's just gray only completely neutral you have to put the crosshair on the far left side okay top to bottom you're going to get neutral color as soon as you pull that crosshair slightly off what you're getting is um a desaturated version of whatever hue you have right now currently we have a blue so what you're going to see is this is gray, but there's a blue cast to it. If I switched it to something else, you'll see that there is a warmer cast to that gray. Now, that's the key to this. Now, here's a couple things that are important. If you look at the two circles there, okay? If you put your cursor over the back, it tells you it's additional color. If you put your cursor over the front, okay? It is, let's see here, it should pop up it shows you the main color, okay? So it's different than Photoshop or some other programs where the left color is your main color, your, your first color. In Corel, it's always the, uh, the right, okay? You can, just so you can see, you can click to activate the background color or the foreground. This is important because when you first come into Corel, if you're not used to it, you'll come to the white and you'll start picking the color here. And when you start painting, and let's say you change the color around, you'll notice that it's not changing to that uh, sort of peach red salmon color, and it drives people nuts. So just keep in mind that you have to make sure the first color is selected when you're going to pick your color to paint with. Now, if we come over, you'll see there's a little stamp and it has like a rainbow color there. You don't need to worry about that, but I will point this out. That will automatically turn on if you're using brushes uh, that are cloning brushes. You, this is something that you're not typically going to turn on and off. It'll do it uh, for you when you pick a certain brush. Um, and it usually is a brush category. Uh, you'll see, if I came down here, there's a section called cloners. When you use these, okay, as a brush category, that's when this will automatically, by default, come on. And you can see what's happening is if I start to paint, it's actually starting to pull from a clone source. And that's another lecture. We'll talk about that later on when we need to get to that. Um, so let's go ahead and uncheck that. Now, here's something I want you to see. Let's go up here to the top corner. Right now, we have a color wheel. We also have color info, and then we have the display is HSV, okay? So what this is, well, let me just show you first these. Color info, if you turn off the sliders underneath the bottom, that's basically what this is. Uh, I always leave both of these on, okay? So 
obviously for me it's imperative to have both now here's something i want to point out though okay is that down here on the bottom when you're looking at color info it's set up by default as rgb this is fine and you may need this sometimes if you're doing something that needs to be numerically accurate okay in terms of percentages but if you're painting and you want to paint from an intuitive standpoint you'll want to change this from h um, excuse me from rgb to hsv and there's two ways to change this you could put your cursor right over this section and you could right click and you'll see it allows you to do a display as hsv you can also go to the top right pop-up menu and you can go here and display as hsv and what's going to happen is you're going to have three sliders h is for the hue okay you'll see the slider on outside will move as you adjust that slider saturation is s so it's basically desaturating your color and then you have v for value to make things darker this is going to really help you if you're trying to get small incremental changes in your color uh, and it's really uh, important. So the RGB become way more complicated, uh, a little bit messy to play around with. Um, but let me show you one last thing that reason why I think having the HSV is really important. Sometimes you're going to need to have a 50% value. Okay. So if I pull this over to the far right corner, that is my 50% value at this point. Now it's full saturation. If I go down to the saturation slider, if I take this and slide it all the way over to the left, that's going to give me a 50% gray. Um, this is important because uh, when you're painting, you should know what percentage of the value you're using, uh, especially if you're painting in black and white. So you, if you want to guarantee that you have 50% uh, gray, this is how you could do it. You can also come in here and memorize the value number, which is 128, and the saturation is at zero. But honestly, it's just, I always grab it to the corner and just slide this over, just so I don't have to think. I don't want to shift my mind set into numerics and numbers and um, when I'm painting. I want to stay on the right side of the brain, the creative side. So uh, that's why I do that. Now, let me give you one last little thing before we go ahead and jump out of here and move on to the next uh, module. Go ahead and clear this out. Now, there is a keyboard shortcut. So you see this color wheel? There's a keyboard shortcut to pop this up, uh, to pull this up into your, uh, in the middle of your page. It's Command Option 1. Okay, so on PC, that should be Control Alt 1. Now, I don't have a PC, but typically, whenever there's a command key, just remember, if I say that for a Mac, just remember, you're always gonna uh, swap it out with a control. So, command option one. Okay, wherever you're at last is where it's gonna pop up. Now, if I pull this down, you'll see there's this sort of uh, slightly darker uh, ring around it. I like to think of this like a clear piece of plastic. So, as long as you're clicking on the inside here, you can relocate this. If you go right to the corner, you can scale this down or you could uh, make it larger. My preference is to make it larger for one reason. If you're trying to make little nuanced shifts of color, when it's larger, you're going to, um, you're going to be able to shift in small increments. If the color is, the disc is small, and it doesn't matter if you're doing it here or on the palette on the side, when you make small increment changes, you're actually making much larger jumps than uh, you realize. So getting a little nuanced changes in value or saturation uh, or even, well, typically that's what you're gonna be dealing with, you don't want that. So so I like to make my disc pretty, pretty large, and then I shift it around this way. So that's command option one. Now. At the end of all of this, I'm gonna go through keyboard shortcuts and I'm gonna show you how to change all of these keyboard shortcuts. I actually have keyboard shortcuts where everything that I've been showing you guys is gonna be slightly different because two reasons. Uh, let's say for example, I use Control C. It's an easier keyboard shortcut for me to remember um, and it's easier to access. And then what I usually will do is I assign these to my Cintiq or my Wacom tablet uh, or Wacom tablet. Um, so it just makes it a lot easier to use. So anyway, that, those are the points that I want to get across with um, 
this particular module. We have the color wheel. Um, I always use HSV and yeah. So let's go ahead and jump on to the next thing. So. Okay, we just concluded the uh, color picker. So stick with me. We're gonna go through the color mixer and swatches. Make sure you check those out as well. Um, also, just so you know, I'm this is part of a uh, playlist for Mastering Corel Painter 101. If you want to make sure you're on this, uh, hit the subscribe button below, hit the bell button as well, because I have these coming out every couple days. Um, as well as if you want to know Photoshop a little bit more in depth, I have a simultaneous uh, Mastering Photoshop 101 going on at the same time. So you'll definitely want to see that as well. Uh, there may be some things in there that you think you know that you. Uh, you might not know so uh, I run into that a lot when I have new students come to my classes uh, they're actually quite shocked at how much uh, they didn't know so um, who knows maybe you might pick up something new so anyway I'll see you till next time and uh, keep painting and deuces